Good evening. So welcome to Parallel Coaching this morning and this evening. So welcome to the revision tutorial and videos. I'm going to wait for a few of you to join us. So please do feel free to pop any questions in below. I'll just have a little chat with you for a moment and I'll wait for a few of you to join us. When you do join me, just let me know you can hear me okay and you can see us fine. Just so you know, we're also on YouTube Live and on Facebook Live today. So I'm on two different screens. So if you can see me, that would be great. It'd be nice to know it's working. Um, yeah, so you should be able to pop on and put a few comments. It'd be great to see see and hear from you this evening so how has your week been I can't believe it's Friday already so <laughs> it's been a bit of a mental one here but um please do pop a little comment in I just would love to know how your week's been so pop a little comment in what you've been up to it has been a mental one here to, to be totally honest with you it's been a bit crazy so uh, me and they've both been split in different places evening dave nice to hear from you um we neil's been here slogging out with his guys for his boot camps and i've been running around all over the place doing assessments uh, for university so for dance fitness degree students been doing their practical assessments up in um bucks new uni so that was all good fun and uh, lots of time in the gym which is always wonderful and um yeah and then tomorrow i'm teaching suspension training in yeovil so <laughs> we're all over the place um and it's just been a bit mental and whilst doing all that i've been putting the finishing uh pieces to a principles revision mastery series as well which is going live uh, basically on the weekend so that one's going live so it's been a bit crazy in the parallel house how's everything been going with you guys pop a little comment what's your week been like it would be lovely to hear from you how much revision have you been getting do getting going on how much learning so some of you I know are doing exercise referral and stuff like that with us as well as things like revision and um, mastery series 2 hello Ms. Michaela lovely to hear from you how has your week been? Pop a little comment in. Always nice to hear. Um, yeah. So let me know how it's been going. I'm going to sit here and have my green tea whilst I wait for a few more people to join us. And the plan is to talk a bit about how to remember muscles ready for your exam day, especially for your anatomy and physiology exam. That's the plan. And the reason why this one has um, come up so many times <laughs> is in the last week, I've had at least five people ask me, how can I remember it ready for exam day? Um, so I've got a couple of little tips and like one particular strategy is one whole that I really want to share with you. So we'll definitely do that. We'll wait for a few more people to join us. And um, evening, Charlie. Nice to hear from you again. So um, we spoke on, huh, when was that? Monday on Facebook Live. It's been a, it feels a bit of a whirlwind week. So yeah, we're going to talk through muscles, but if you have any other questions, pop them in, um, because that's what the beauty of it being Facebook Live is all about. So please do pop in your questions. I know there's a few of you watching on Facebook Live. There is a few of you watching on YouTube Live. So we are trying to do both at the same time, but let me know that they are working because um, you know how wonderful technology is. I thought I'd just try and do both at the same time. <laughs> So please do pop a little comment in. Let me know it's all working okay. Especially YouTube. Always always wondering about how whether that's working or not. Okay, so um a few more joining us. So if it's okay with you guys, I'm gonna fire away and start talking about the how to remember muscles ready for your anatomy and physiology exam. But if you have other questions, just pop them in below because that would be awesome and then I can start working on those as well. So I'm sort of able to chat away with you for ages this afternoon this evening so um please do go ahead okay so um i don't it is the thing isn't it the question the bit that people get stuck on is how to remember your muscles ready for exam day in particular for your obviously your level three anatomy and physiology exam but they do come up a little bit at level two as well um but most people panic about it at level three because the list gets a lot longer <laughs> so it's probably the one that most people are are asking questions about 
Hi Stu, lovely to hear from you. Um, so as part of the sort of an anatomy, physiology and learning those muscles, there's quite a list that you need to go through. Now that can be a little bit overwhelming and we don't really want it to be overwhelming. So I've got, I've kind of got a good structure that I generally ask people to go through. And the beauty of going through that structure is that you're actually able to have a bit of a strategy to it. Now, because if you open up your book at the manual bit where it's all about muscles, you've just got this great big table probably. And on this table, you've got the muscle name. You might have a picture depending on the muscle, the, the, the manual that you're going through. Um, and then you've got origins and insertions and they're just words. They're just words. <laughs> and if you don't know about the muscle name and you don't know about the origins and insertions, then you're totally lost. And you're just trying to remember things word for word for word based on things that you've you're trying to drill into your head and it, it just doesn't work like that it's just not like that um and if you're anything like me then learning from a manual is insane it doesn't work as many times as you kind of go over it and over it so i know a lot of people like watching our videos and stuff on youtube on facebook because it kind of helps um so it's using these okay so first part in relation to remembering your muscles is that you need to first of all get a list of the ones that you're expected to know now we have a list of those that we use in our vision mastery series but it does depend on the awarding body you're going through so the best thing to do is to open your manual up on that list so that you at least know how many there are get that list of all the muscles that you need to know the names of um, and they're going to be obvious ones like traps and pecs and then you're going to have the really tiny ones like terrace minor and soleus so you're going to have a good mixture of things in there some of them you'll know and some of them you won't know so it's a case of having a list of all of them now on that list count how many you have la 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 counting away once you've counted them you need to kind of find a timetable to structure in when you're going to learn them all now the reason why I say that is that most people when they're coming to doing this they have at least a couple of weeks um, some people they literally just have a weekend or a day <laughs> um, in which case then it's a bit mental and a little bit harder to, to squeeze in but you can do it so it's just a case of structuring how many days have you got and I mean days that you're willing to do your like research and your revision on not just days because some days you might have a friend's birthday party to go to you might have um other lessons that you need to go to and actual pt courses and clients and all sorts of wonderful things oh and not to mention probably full-time jobs as well so fit it around so what days can you give at least 10 minute slots how many 10 minute slots can you give to remembering your muscles so break that down, that's totally individual for you. So you'll have a list of all the muscles you need to know and you'll have a number associated to that list. And then you'll have a list of all the days and, and as a result of all those days, all the times, the little 10 minute slots that you could give to remembering a muscle. Hello, Kim. Okay, fantastic. So as you're going through, um, you've got these two things. Now the idea is to match those up. So what you need to do is to have a strategy of something you can do in those 10 minutes. And this is where it kind of gets interesting and generally where people um, find it's going to help. The reason why we break it down is because if you try and remember all this different information in one condensed time, it's going to absolute brain fog you and you'll get more mixed up. So you need time to settle it in. You need time to let it settle in your brain. OK, so. Um, I'm a big fan of using visual memory. So the more that you, hello, Awas, uh, have I pronounced your name right? Orsaf, maybe? Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. Tell me if I haven't. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I'm a big fan of visual memory and using this to help you because that's one thing you can take into the exam with you. You can remember what you see in your head. You can recapture that image all over again. So, first off, get a really clear image of the muscle that you've targeted for that 10 minute time. So you go, I'm gonna learn about, and I'm gonna use gastrox today, so gastrocnemius. 
And the reason why I'm using that one is because I had it earlier with somebody. I was li literally going through it with somebody on a, a, a Skype revision tutorial. So um, the beauty of doing that is that I have one I prepared earlier. So you need to find a good um, image, basically. You can get these kind of in any loads of different books, um, like the stretching anatomy ones, strength training anatomy, they're all really good. Um, or you might just have a really good manual, or if you're on our vision mastery, you would have come across that we've got like a little image for each muscle. Um, so um, there you go, gastroc. So I've kind of got a nice little side view of the gastrocnemius in here, and then I've also got the other side where you can see a little bit better right in through here now regardless make sure you can see it really well and the idea for this is that you can literally get it in your mind's eye so your aim is to really absorb and really see the whole area of it and you should be able to see where it originates and where it inserts so remember when you're going through it it's always heart origin joint insertion it's always hoji that's a that's the order of it your heart always is and then your origin is the closest to your heart and then the joint and then your insertion so hoji always that way around so remember your heart origin joint insertion so um you find out where your first of all where your origin is so find the origin and know where that is so for gastrocnemius i know that that is femoral condyles which is the very bottom part of your femur so those little like uh, bony rolly bits that are in your knee joint basically so those little cup shapes that are in your um at the very end of your femur your femoral condyles that's where your gastroc originates and then it goes down and it inserts right down on your calcaneus right down here um via the achilles tendon cool okay so we kind of know it we've got it written down but we don't necessarily have remembered it yet so first step get a good picture once you've got the really good picture of it you need to remember that that is the gastrocnemius so the next step is to grab something and write literally write down how you spell that word now i've just realized you're probably in mirror image so this is not going to help you very much at all evening shan <laughs> so imagine this is the right way around that you need it if we are in mirror image and apologies um but i can't write gastrocnemius in mirror image <laughs> so um when you see it on here you have it written down and as you've kind of got that really neatly written down you want to imagine that those words get tattooed like literally tattooed on the muscle itself so that you can imagine them wherever you want like all the way across it you can imagine them go around it the more 3d in your head that it is the better but imagine it literally getting tattooed all the way down so really physically imagine those letters where it spells out gastrocnemius all the way down that muscle cool so as soon as you've got that, you've just got to bore that into your mind. So keep looking at the image, keep looking at the image, keep looking at the image, and then layer on those words, those letters, and then close your eyes and just try and grab that image in your mind's eye. So when you're looking at it with your eyes closed, so I hope you have your eyes closed going through this. I'm not just sat here on my own doing this. Um, <laughs> let me know that you are actually joining in. Maybe hit a couple of likes so I know that you're still with me. Um, so <laughs> when you've got your um, eyes closed, you then literally imagine the whole shape of that muscle. And that, so you should be able to see the origin. You should be able to see the insertion. Totally visualize it. And oh, again, I'm glad we got some likes. I'm glad you're there. Um, and you should be able to physically see the word gastrocnemia is now written on it. It should be like a magic trick. It's literally bored into it. So now you know that that shape, whenever you see that shape, that is a gastrocnemius. And whenever you see the word gastrocnemius, that is also that muscle. And you know where it is in the body. Good. That bit's done. Now we need to add to it. So you've got the base bit. Hi Bev, nice to see you. nice to see you've joined us. So once we've got the shape of the muscle and you know where it is, and you now know the name of it, and that's tattooed on it, 
we now need to add something else. So instead of it just being the name of it, we now need to add the origin and insertion. So add on to your post-it note. I like post-it notes. I think they kind of generally do, do the job and we've got a lot of them hanging around in the office. So um, this is where you go now. So above it, write the origin. Always write your origin above the name of the muscle. It's going to help you massively if you just have a system. If you always want to do it the other way around, that's fine by me, but it won't help you remember it. Um, try and keep origins above. So you go origin, femoral condyles, write that above your muscle. And then below it, write the insertion, which is the calcaneus. Now, for argument's sake, I've written in there Achilles tendon as well, because it attaches via that tendon. But if you can remember any other tendons in your body, then fantastic. But you don't need to know them. For some reason, the Achilles is one that comes up quite a lot because of injuries and stuff like that. So you have it literally written above it and below it. Guess what's going to happen now? You've already got this bored into your brain okay so you've got this image bored into your brain for gastrocnemius hopefully not with my face next to it because that will really um uh bemuse you next time you have to imagine a gastrocnemius and you've got the word gastrocnemius tattooed across it and then above that you've now got the word femoral condyles written you know that that's femoral condyles where it's attaching into uh, where it's originating from and then the insertion you've got calcaneus written on it so you could physically write that on the actual insertion. Oh, sorry, oh, that was bad, wasn't it? Origin and insertion. I'm trying to do it all in mirror image. It's driving me mad. Um, <laughs> so um, when you've got it, physically write that on your clear image. And then close your eyes again. Remember, do that eye closing thing. Um, and let me know you're doing it. So <laughs> you do the eye close. And you literally have these words tattooed on that image that you have. So close your eyes for a second and imagine that now you've got femoral condyles and you've got calcaneus written on it. The femoral condyles is above it because that's going to be our origin. And then we've just written calcaneus underneath it as our insertion. Awesome. OK, so now if I was to ask you and um, to do that over and over and over again, that's the key. So now in your 10 minute slot of remembering and revising and all that wonderful stuff, just for this one muscle, all you need to do now is just close your eyes, go back over it. Can you see it? Do you know where the origin is? Do you know where the insertion is? Do you know what they're called? And can you spell the main name? That's it. And then you go over it, close your eyes, do it again. And then there's one final step. And this is to do an exercise that activates that muscle. So for calves, I might do a calf raise. So you literally go into a calf position, a standing position, and you're lifting your heels up off the floor. So you're doing a calf raise. Or you can do a stretch that involves it, that's fine, but something where you can feel it. So if you can feel that muscle, and now you've got it in your mind's eye, you know exactly what it looks like, you can imagine where it's insert, uh, originating and where it's inserting, and you can kind of go, yeah, okay, I can really feel that. And when I move, I can feel it. Perfect. That's what you need. And that is consolidated in your mind. So that means that you have now learnt gastrocnemius. Now, you have a great big list. So the one thing you need to not do straight away <laughs> is to go away and then go into the next one straight off because you'll, you'll evaporate what's left. What you need to do is if you're on a solid revision session, you need to move on to something else. Go to hormones, go to energy systems, just move away from muscles and then come back and do your next one on your list. Bit by bit by bit. Little by little, a little becomes a lot, okay? So start off with the little chunks. I can't take credit for that quote, that's Neil, all over that. So um, little by little, a little becomes a lot. So you're literally working, chunking it down into 10 minutes of revision each time. And that's why you needed your timetable of how many 10 minutes you've got before your exam. Now, the other good way of doing this is that then once you've done five or ten, depending on how you are with this, once you've done a certain number, that might be a week's time. It might be just five hours time. <laughs> it depends on your, oh, I've lost you. Sorry. Okay. 
I'm moving too much and I'm pushing my headphones out my ears. Um, <laughs> so once you've done it and you need to then do a revision session where you're literally revising it. And what I would do is I'd test myself. I'd get that list of all those um, muscles that you had and I'd go, OK, gastroc, close my eyes. Yeah, what have I got? Gastrocnemius, I can imagine it. I can see what it looks like. Femoral condyles at the top. And then I've got calcaneus at the bottom and there's an Achilles tendon in there as well. And then you can go back over it and you'll find that you remembered it. Yay! <laughs> Which is the whole plan, yeah? That's what it's all about, surely. Um, so give us some thumbs up if this is making vague sense. If you don't like thumbs up, you can give it some hearts instead. I like that too. Um, but something that makes me know that this works for you, that you're understanding these whole processes. And I'm going to go through them again. Also, pop in a couple of questions because I'm wrapping up on these muscles and I'm going to need some questions to be able to answer you with. So um, those steps again, really quickly this time because I know I waffled on the last one. So first off, get a list of all the muscles that you need. So get a list of all the muscles that you need to remember for your exam day. Find time, 10 minute sections to go through all of those. So if you've got 20 muscles, you need 20 10 minute sections before your exam comes around. You could do that in a weekend or you could do it over 20 days. Doesn't matter. So those 10 minute sections. Then get a really clear image of the muscle itself. Find the clear image. It should show origins and insertions on there so that you can kind of see where they originate and in insert. Write, down, write it down. Make sure you spell it correctly, just this once, <laughs> just this once. Um, so write it down and then imagine that getting tattooed on the image. Once you've done that, then close your eyes, look at it. You should be able to see it on there. And if not, keep repeating that process. Keep looking at the image, keep looking at the word and imagine it getting tattooed on top of it. And then keep going over it, closing your eyes until it's stuck in your head. Once that's in your head, you then go on to adding your origins and your insertions. Pop your origin above, your insertion below, and then tattoo that information onto it. Once you've tattooed that information onto it, go over it again, look at it, look at the image, look at it, look at the image. Close your eyes. Is it there? Is it there? If not, do it again, repeat it. And then do an exercise that physically uses that muscle and imagine it working. And then you're done. Boom. And then it should all be in your head. Um, it sounds a little bit of one of those things where I go, oh, I promise it works. And people just go, oh, I can never get muscles to stick. It never sticks in my head. And um, generally, the reason why people find it doesn't stick in their head, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, so find a way of doing like an angry face if I'm wrong, but generally it's because people try or they expect to learn it in one sitting. It's not like um, learning about the energy system. It's not one principle to learn. You've got 20 muscles to learn. So you need to give yourself time and space and you need to be able to understand that. Thank you, Kim, for your thumbs up. That's always good. Um, I'm glad it makes sense. So it's just okay. You need to allow yourself time and space to understand it. You need to give yourself a chance <laughs> and you need to believe in yourself that you can do it because you can. It's just about having the system, having a strategy that you can put in place that breaks it down into bit by bit. Now, if you're anything like me, your attention span might be atrocious, in which case these 10 minute slots will work really well. <laughs> if you're fantastic and your attention span is great, you might be trying to do this in a big chunk. But be careful because your brain will start confusing things. Give yourself the chance to space it out. And it will be a massive game changer, I promise. OK, so I think I've kind of covered most on how to remember muscles. But have you got any questions for me? So pop in a couple of questions. What are your questions in relation to A, remembering muscles um, or muscles in particular or getting ready for your exam? Um, and I know I had a question earlier about core and how to remember the core. So um, depending on the questions that come through, if I don't get any particular I'll um, dive in and talk a little bit about core training and how to remember the core muscles in particular. Um, but I will have to do some doodling. <laughs> and I can't guarantee it will be in the mirror image. So um, <laughs> we'll have a little look at that. 
Um, but please do pop a comment if you've got any questions getting ready for your exam. That would be great. Awesome. And also, I would just really love to know that that was useful um, and that I didn't just rub it away to myself. So give me some little hearts or some likes. So just tap them a couple of times so I can see them flutter across the screen. That will make my day. Um, and this has been a long week. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a lion. Um, <laughs> so please do pop them down. Um, awesome. I'm just checking YouTube comments at the same time as well. So if things look a little strange, that's where I am. Lovely. Sean, I'm glad that's a good thumbs up eh? and some lovely hearts. Thank you. Um, so those of you on YouTube, I can see you watching as well, but pop a little comment in if you've got questions, pop some thumbs up, that would be great. I can also see where your comments are coming through. Um, great. Okay, lovely. So um, I haven't got any other questions popping through, but I wanted to talk about core and how to remember the muscles of the core because um, I had an email, and I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but I had an email come through about it, um, and they said they couldn't make this particular live uh, revision tutorial, but they wanted to be able to kind of find out, so I'll answer it on here, and then they can watch it later, and I'm sure it'll help you guys as well. Um, again, make sure that you have any other comments that you've got coming through, so I can see them, and then I know whether to pop any questions. I'll just pop a little comment in here. Uh, cool. Okay, so core training. Now, core training is um, an interesting one, I think. Uh, I generally think it's a, a fun one, at least, to go through and work with your clients because. You, they can generally feel it working. Everybody likes core training because it makes them feel like they're getting a flatter stomach, they're getting the six pack. And it's generally the sexy movements, like it's different things that you can be doing. It's not just working in one plane of motion or boring resistance machines and stuff. But the difference becomes that if you're core training and what you've been doing in core training is just sagittal stuff. So what I mean by that is um, ab crunches in particular um, and sit-ups. If you've just been doing sagittal, you've not been getting them all. So we need to make sure that we're getting everything. And actually, it just reinforces why you need to know where all of these uh, muscles are in your body. It's not just about abs, but you need to know about your calf. You need to know about your quads. You need to know about your hamstrings because... When it comes to then finding a new exercise and you see this funky new exercise online or you watch it on YouTube or something or you see someone in the gym doing it, you can look at it and go, what muscle are they working? How is that joint moving? And if that if they're doing a sit-up whereby they're coming all the way up, well, why is their spine straight? That can't be working their rectus abdominis because their rectus abdominis curls the spine. So you can start breaking it up and breaking it down. So that's why you need to know about all these muscles. It's not just to pass an exam. It's not because Active IQ, CYQ, Skills Active, whoever you're doing it through is being awkward. <laughs> um, it's because they want you to know it so you can go away and be the best PT that you can be or the best fitness instructor you can be. So um, in terms of remembering the core muscles, a way to remember it. Um, you have to put up with my drawings. And they are on post-it notes. Um, so this, by the way, is a really straight lumbar spine. <laughs> so apologies for its straightness. You know it generally has a bit of a curve. And it's on a person facing this way. Okay, so they're facing out towards like the window in here that you can see. Um, so sacrum here and five lumbar vertebrae. Awesome. Okay, so they're facing this way. So there are four inner core muscles you need to know for your level three anatomy and physiology exam. Also for things like exoferral, pilates, all that type of jazz. First one we're going to go through is across the top here. So right across the top, it sits between your first lumbar and your last thoracic. 
so thoracic 12 and it sits between these two and it's your diaphragm so diaphragm really important one most people kind of don't see this as being one of the muscles that they need to remember or they don't even see it as a muscle let alone to do with core but it is promise me it is <laughs> so diaphragm's number one then we have another type of diaphragm but it's the other side and this is badly drawn apologies um so it sits underneath and this is your pelvic floor so pelvic floor diaphragm across here and you would have heard about this in relation to the working with prenatal clients you've probably done that at level two if, or if you're working towards level two so your diaphragm at the top pelvic floor at the bottom perfect okay now there are two more you need to know one is multifidus multifidus goes all the way down here now what i want you to imagine in your spine is from the back is that you've just going to draw a little Christmas tree on your back, all the way down your back, as if the tree trunk's running all the way down your spine. You're just going to draw this little Christmas tree all the way down your back. And that's what your multifidus looks like. Now, because it's this Christmas tree crossing all the way down, its job is to literally protect and stabilize your spine is also really good at keeping you fully extended keeping your spine extended and that's your multifidus the way i remember that is multi christmas trees got lots of little layers multi-layered kind of a nice little way of remembering it um so multifidus all the way down here then we have another of our inner core unit and this one goes all the way around like a corset i tell you what let's see if you can get it pop in the comments what is the name of the next one i'm going to draw in that makes up your inner core unit do, do, do. pop it in i'll finish drawing oh come on where are those comments so make sure you pop in those comments in. What is the name of the muscle that is the fourth one that we're missing from your inner core unit? Pop it in. So I'm not sure anybody's popped any comments on our YouTube live. No, nobody's on the YouTube one. No comments on there. But Facebook live, you are doing awesome. So I know you're here and I know you can be popping in some more comments. So. What do you think the name of the muscle is? I know there's a little delay, so I'm going to go ahead and answer it, but I hope you're putting in some answers. Okay, cool. Right, so it's transverse abdominus or TVA. Transverse abdominus. Transverse abdominus. Now, dominus, yeah. Okay, there you go. So that one's the whole way around, and that works like a corset. So all four of these work together. Now, have you ever been at a party, probably when we were a little bit younger, but have you ever been at a party where they had balloons? And then towards the end of the party, the balloons kind of go a little bit and a little bit saggy. Okay? I want you to imagine one of those balloons. And then with that, I just want you to just shove your finger in the side of the balloon, basically, and it will tighten. All of a sudden, this saggy balloon just gets tightened. Now, you've probably heard in relation to core training that you need to engage your core. You need to pull your belly button in. So they say, oh, just pull your belly button in. And that works as long as you're pulling your TVA in, not just your rectus abdominis. So that's quite important. But you pull in this TVA here and you end up basically like the balloon that I was saying about at the end of the party. You are just pushing your finger in to that. Now that balloon starts to tighten because what you've done is you've increased the surface area. So the surface area was all this and now you are increased the surface area which has increased the pressure inside. Which means you've increased your intra-abdominal pressure. Intra-abdominal pressure goes up and if your intra-abdominal pressure goes up you now can rely on the pressure that's in here much more than you have to rely on your bones and joints yay which means we're less likely to get things like slip discs and oh i hate that word sorry herniated discs <laughs> um injuries to your tendons and ligaments um for uh postnatal so those that have had babies less likely to damage their pelvic floor all really important stuff so 
Um, when you're thinking about all four of these, they all work together to form that intra-abdominal pressure. But we need to do something to it to make sure that we tighten that intra-abdominal pressure. So like with the balloon at the end of the party, you're just jabbing it, pulling in one side. That's like when you, excuse the demo, this is when you pull in from one side. But that only works, isn't it? If you pull in one side, but don't arch. Because if you arch, you're just basically moving the floppiness of the whole balloon, which doesn't work. We want to make sure that everything else stays still, but we pull it in. Now, one more thing on, to the, on this, um, and then I will probably let you have your Friday evening, as I'll be here forever talking about this. So the other way that you can do that is you can just breathe. Ah. So as long as you keep your TVA nice and solid, you keep your pelvic floor stable, and you don't move your back, then you, if as you breathe, you're pushing this down. So let's go breathing in the diaphragm moves down. So take a deep breath now, put your hands on your stomach and take a deep breath. And as you breathe in, your diaphragm moves down. So as your diaphragm moves down, if you've managed to keep all of this still, then you have tightened your intra-abdominal pressure, your abs are engaged, your core is engaged. So core and inner core unit is about diaphragm, TVA, pelvic floor, and multifidus. However, you decide to engage that, essentially, you need to pull it in from one area in particular. Pull it in from one area, and you will have an engaged intra abdominal pressure. Ta -da! Let me know if that made any sense at all, or that I've just been talking to myself, writing on a bit of post it. So please do pop some, uh, yeah, give me a couple of those lovely likes again. They're, they're nice, they do my ego good. Um, <laughs> no, genuinely, pop some comments in so I know that we're on the right track. I know it's nobody put in about TVA, nobody wrote the word in, unless you have, but my screen hasn't updated, in which case I apologise. Oh, but some likes are lovely. Good, I'm glad. Okay, so I'm approaching the end of tonight because I've answered the questions that I set out to, um, but if you have any particular questions, then please do pop them in quickly. I'll give you a couple more minutes, um, which gives you a chance, and then I'll let you carry on with your evening and your weekend. Now, before I say cheerio, though, um, I definitely want to say good luck to a few people that are going ahead and doing their assessments and exams this weekend. So I've been chatting to a few of you on Facebook. I know you're getting ready to get going. A couple people on email. Um, so... Yeah, best of luck for your exam coming up. And I know that you're probably only thinking about that right now. <laughs> um, in which case, it's a pleasure to have you here anyway. Awesome. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah, so there is a few of you. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, Caroline, I'm glad that you like the core muscles. That's good. I'm glad that you liked it. Um, and when are your exam? In fact, actually, guys, if you just pop in a comment, let me know when your exams are, because then I can give you a little shout out and a good luck, especially for you. And also, it's nice to kind of share and have that little moment before we go back into the mad world um, of preparing dinner for everybody and getting your revision done all at the same time. Charlie, I'm glad that's been helpful. Stu, glad it's helpful. No other particular questions? Just nice thanks. I like your thanks. So thank you for thanking. Um, but outside that, any questions? And when are your exams? So questions and exams. I'm going to finish my green tea before I get ready for dinner. If you want to say what you're having for dinner too, that's cool. You can pop that in. <laughs> Awesome. Um, actually, those of you that were saying it's helpful, which bit was most helpful? Was it the things with the gastrocnemius and physically writing down the actual words, or was it more helpful with the core side of it and going through it, i.e. with the, the core training? So let me know. I know, Caroline, you said that it's more helpful or the core was pretty helpful. Wednesday's exam day, Charlie. Good luck. Best of luck for it. Um, I'm planning on doing one of these hopefully on Monday. Tuesday, I'm 
out doing settings but hopefully on monday i'll be able to hop on another facebook live with you um so yeah let me know and uh hop onto that that would be awesome Kim, uh, like your point on remembering muscles, but it's more difficult for shoulder, back, ab, and muscles. I totally agree. They all kind of cross over, and there's loads to remember. But remember, break them down into each one. Know what each one does. And I know that you maybe can't feel it as much, but it's all really important still. Sean, it's great to know that you're having pasta and prawns for dinner. <laughs> great. Okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah, go um go through each of those on the where were we on the so Kim, go through each of them individually um and try and get a good decent picture that still shows you each of the origins and insertions. Because sometimes, like if I get this one, for example, uh blah 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 blah. Sometimes they all overlap, which is just a little bit of a nightmare. So for example, on here. You can't really see the shoulder um, origins and insertions because they're all, or the bicep one, because they're all overlapping. So you want to get a really good picture to be able to do it. Caroline, I just found out I passed up my level two. Fantastic. Well done. Congratulations. That's really awesome. Um, not planning. Ooh. Not planning to start study for level three until after the summer. Yeah, absolutely. This is very rainy. That's a very good idea. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Sunshine always comes first. Um, Stu, glad it was helpful. Have a lovely weekend. Hope you're doing lovely, wonderful things. Charlie, all of it was fab. Visual learner, fab. So am I. In case you hadn't guessed with all these drawings. Um, so we explain everything with post-it notes. <laughs> Awesome. Good. Glad it helps. Well done, Caroline. Awesome. Need to book my AMP level two. Yes, Bev, get booking at level two. Um, do you feel confident enough to get started on it? So I am going to leave it there for tonight. I'm going to say, Charlie, good luck for Wednesday. Everybody else I've been speaking to on email and Facebook, good luck for your exams that are happening on the weekend. And I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, pop them under and I will get them on Monday when I plan on doing the Monday Facebook Live. Makes sense. Um, or I will message underneath with some particular stuff. Hit us a couple of likes before you leave. I'm going to disappear. Thank you very much for being amazing and giving all your wonderful uh, thanks as well. It does mean a lot. So have a lovely evening. Have an awesome weekend. And just keep being outstanding. Keep learning smart and having lots of confidence in your vision and your knowledge because you do know it you just got to believe you do right that's me done i'm oh bev i'm glad you feel loads better about it um than you did before okay all right fantastic have a lovely evening guys and i will see you probably on monday so have a good weekend take care and those of you on youtube it's been a fantastic pleasure having you join us. I hope you've been able to hear and respond, etc. I've not heard, seen many of your comments, but those of you that have been on here, I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, so I'm going to leave you now, um, but all the best. Take care.